Okay, as promised, we're going to do transient analysis now. And before we do transient analysis, there's some things I want to remind you of from our AC analysis is that we used an amplitude of 10, which I said was RMS, and we used a frequency of 150. So we need to know those values and we need to do a few calculations before we set up our transient analysis. So 10 volts RMS, 150 hertz. So what I did is I came in here and used my spreadsheet. I like to use spreadsheets to do math because of if I make a mistake, I can usually go back and see it. I don't have it scribbled on a piece of paper somewhere. Usually it's electronic. <coughs> Here's my spreadsheet from last time, and I just added to it. If I have an RMS of 10, that gives me a peak value or an amplitude of 14.1. And all I did was multiply the 10 by the square root of 2. So square root of 2, round, and move the decimal. The frequency is 150 hertz. So I captured those two numbers. I need to know the period, and the period of a waveform that's 150 hertz is nothing but 1 over the frequency. So I can get XL to do it, 1 divided by 150, <clears throat> and this tells me what my frequency, or what my period is. And this number is in seconds, so I've got to remember that. My sample time will be 1 tenth. So... I don't like all those sixes, so I'm going to write, make it seven for my period, and my sample time will be tenth, one tenth of that. So my sample time will be 0 0.00 extra zero seven. So I've got two zeros, and this would be a seven if I rounded. So my sample time needs to be approximately one-tenth of whatever your period is. doesn't have to be perfect. You kind of want 10 samples per period. If it's nine, it's not that big a deal. Uh, but you want to be in that neighborhood of somewhere around 10. How many waveforms do I want to see when I go to plot it? And typically you want to see between two and four. So if I want to see three waveforms, then the three waveforms times the period is going to be what I'm using to calculate how much time I need to let my transient simulation run. That's, that's what I'm doing this for. So I'm going to go in here and change this to 0.007 instead of having a calculation. <clears throat> because that just makes the math easier for me. If I do three waveforms... I also want to delay, so I typically will delay one to two cycles before I start capturing the data. Um, when you first start up a circuit, that is the true transient period, when everything's a zero and you're starting it up. After a certain number of cycles, after the system has come up to equilibrium, it's not really transient. Um, you do have varying voltages and currents in there, but they repeat. And when something starts repeating, it's no longer considered transient. It's just it's it's now in what we call its steady state. So it can be repeating, but still be in a steady state. Your transient is truly your startup. So with that being said, you typically want to avoid the true transient by delaying one to two cycles. If I delay two cycles and my period is 0 0.007, I just multiply that by 2 and um, that would be 0 0.014. So I want a 0 0.014 second delay. The number of waveforms is 3. 3 times my period will be 0 0.021 seconds for a total how can I put that up there waveform so let's change that so that's three um, equals three times my period 
which is B14. Okay, so there's my waveforms, number of waveforms. That'll get me in the ballpark. It's actually a little more, but that's okay. My delay time. What I need for spice is my start time, my stop time, and my maximum time per step. If I'm going to have a delay and miss two cycles, my delay time and my start time will wind up being the same. So this would be 0 0.014. Okay. My stop time will be the time that I want the waveform to run, which is my number of waveforms, which I said was 3. So if I add the 2, 1 to the 1, 4, I get 35. 0 0.035 so if I start at 14 and I do 21 or three cycles I will get a stop time of 0 0.035 this is telling uh, this will be telling LT Spice how long to run the simulation for my maximum time per step is my sample time so that just comes straight down 0 0.3 zeros and a 7 so I boldened that because those are the numbers we're going to have to program into LT Spice. We're also going to have to know its peak, the frequency, and the number of cycles we picked, which was three. Okay, so I've got that. If I need it, I'm going to minimize, go back into our circuit. And what you see is I still set up for AC analysis. The nice thing about it is I can go in and I can change it. Now, it's not going to get rid of my AC analysis. It's just going to add a transient. So, what was my stop time? 0.035, right? I don't remember. 0.035. My time to start saving data, that is my start time. <clears throat> and when I start saving data, those are the ones you can plot. 0.014. My maximum time per step is the 0 .0007. That's going to get me 10, um, approximately 10 sample points per period. Start the DC, external DC supply voltage is at zero. For some reason, that always works better, so I always check that first box. I'm not sure what Spice is doing behind the scenes, and I haven't, I haven't done a lot with it. But I, I like to have stuff that works that I can that I can uh, uh, reproduce. And so if I know if I put a delay and I set everything equal to zero, everything's starting the same. It's got a transient period. It comes up and everything's good. I click OK and now I've got this transient analysis. So I'm going to click it in my circuit. Notice it changed the dot in front of the AC to a semicolon. So anytime it sees to analysis in the LT SPI circuit, the one with the period in front is the one it's actually doing. I also have to go in and modify my waveform because now I want it to be a sine wave. So I'm going to get rid of the amplitude because this small signal AC analysis, this is for AC analysis. The DC is for the dot op analysis. When you go into transient, you, you've got to build your waveform. And so what I want to see is a sine wave. And my amplitude is my 14.1. And this amplitude is amplitude. My frequency needs to be 150 hertz. And I think I wanted to see three cycles. I'm leaving everything else blank. So waveform, frequency, number of cycles. Uh, I think I need five. I'm delaying two, and I'm delaying two, and then I'm saving three. So if I do five cycles, we should be okay. Hadn't thought about that before, but what you're doing is you're basically telling this to only be a sine wave for five cycles. You can make it as many as you want to, but I think um, it'd be easier if you just set your number of cycles up to be equal to what you're planning to look at. Alrighty, so I've got my waveform, my AC value set. 
and it changed it and you could do all this with a net list if you would like now I want to simulate and I want to run now what you see is I don't get the the little results anymore I get a graph and so if I want to look at the voltage if I'm hovering over a device I can see the current through it okay if I click on a wire I see the voltage with respect to zero so if I want to see the voltage of my weight source waveform I can do that and you can see that uh, we cut off our cycles there a little bit so let's go back in there and s make it go a little bit longer on my number of cycles let's see cancel I want to change this so let's go six cycles yeah notice it's only showing me three and it's offsetting the time back to zero so it's picking up somewhere in the third cycle so now if I simulate and run you see I've got a couple good cycles there two or three <laughs> I'm not looking for an exact science. I'm looking for you to be able to plot it. And this is what your oscilloscope would show, which is why you got to do the amplitude. Because if you build the circuit and you, and you simulate it in SPICE and you use RMS values instead of peak, then your actual circuit will look different than your simulation. And you always want your simulation to uh, be as close to what you expect in your real circuit as possible. So there's my voltage of my source. Now, we did a calculation for voltage and resistance. Now, I'm going to do something uh, uh, a little bit difficult here while I'm holding the microphone. I'm going to click on this line, but I'm going to click and hold. And then I'm going to drag my probe to the other side of my resistor, and I'm going to click again. And what you see now is the blue is the voltage across the resistor okay and what we see is it has a peak of about uh, six and so if I multiply that by um, 70 percent what do I get hey I get about four four point two maybe not perfect but hey there you go and that's what we predicted back here when we did the calculations in the prior video okay I'm gonna do the same thing across the inductor I'm gonna click on one side and hold click to the other side and there you see that your inductor voltage is actually bigger than your source voltage which is green and this would be hard to do with an oscilloscope because oscilloscopes if you want actually want to look at the waveforms oscilloscopes the one side always introduces a ground and if you start grounding out parts of your circuit you're basically introducing shorts so i can simulate it i can calculate it i can visually show it to you but you could measure this with a meter and what we predicted was that the voltage across our inductor, if as read with a meter, would be bigger than our source voltage. And this sort of shows that. Um, I don't have to click and hold because the other side of my capacitor is zero. So I just click once and there's the third waveform. And what you see is that the angles are, always, are off. In other words, they peak at different times. So my inductive voltage peaks, and then my waveform peaks, and then these two peak after. And I don't remember what we predicted. Um, the L was like 23 degrees, which would be a little bit ahead. And then these would be minus 67, which would be a little bit behind, and minus 157, which would be... Uh, almost a half cycle behind so is this almost a half cycle behind the green so this peaks here and the green valleys here so yes this is a little bit uh, almost a whole cycle 
almost a half cycle off this one's a little more and then this one's actually ahead in time a positive angle actually happens first so this shows the waveforms that we were able to predict with the other analysis and also a little bit on how to set up your transient so this is the main thing start time stop time max time per step usually you can do a delay if you want to see the true transients you can set that to zero you can make stop time whatever you want you know three four cycles usually is all, all you need because three or four cycles fills up my window if you were putting it on a oscilloscope you'd want the window to be full but not you know hundreds of cycles you'd only want a couple generally about two is what you want somewhere about well one full cycle to two somewhere in that neighborhood but with transient analysis i can graphically show what we calculated from our ac analysis so that's pretty neat anyway i think it is thank you for watching and i hope this helps